Okay, hi, and welcome to the Hidden Secrets to Health. I'm your host, Christina Cole. I'm a certified um, health coach as well as a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner. And the purpose of the podcast is really to start showing people how to incorporate more holistic, natural healing modalities into their life and start seeking health that lasts long term versus getting those quick fixes that a lot of times we get through Western medicine. And so today I have a special guest, Reverend Desiree Joyce Sparrow. She's coming to us from Long Island. She is a 500 hour certified yoga instructor with thousands of hours of education. She's been teaching Ayurvedic yoga for the last 20 years and she's been in the wellness industry for over 30 years. She is also a CBD educator and she's going to teach us today a bit about Ayurvedic yoga and how you can incorporate CBD into that practice for additional health benefits. So welcome Desiree, thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here and share this amazing plant. And yeah, I've really been excited by how much I've learned. And I've also been really surprised by the phenomenal PR job that's been done over the years to really hide the benefits of um, cannabidiol really, and not to mention all the benefits of just hemp itself and all the things it can do for us. So how did you get into um, Ayurveda? So um, I was introduced to Ayurveda from one of my yoga teacher trainings. Um, like you mentioned, I have thousands of hours of formal training in yoga, but it wasn't until I delved into a specific training that introduced me to an Ayurvedic doctor. So um, our teacher is Dr. Nina. She's based in New York City. And um, she really kind of um, blew my mind when she started talking about the various doshas, which, you know, I'll explain what that is. But I really okay. felt like I was finally able to understand myself and my imbalances, as well as my family members' imbalances, as well as my <laughs> students' imbalances. And I find myself even now dealing with, you know, somebody perhaps that's rude at Target, um, just having an imbalance. I'm like, oh, they're having a vata imbalance. And this is how the language is in my house now. And I'm able to really hone in and uh, very specifically address those imbalances. So it's, it's a beautiful ancient science that's been around for over 5,000 years. Um, it's interesting that in modern day, or Western medicine, we're going back to the ancient teachings. Mm -hmm. But um, there's a lot of wisdom within this method. And so I started incorporating that into my teaching. And really, um, Ayurveda means uh, life or science of life. So Ayur means life and Veda means wisdom. And there is wisdom within nature. So this is really how um, I live my life. And it's really shifted things tremendously for me. Yeah, it's, um, I think as we go through some of these awakening processes, and the shifts that we start making are really pretty phenomenal. Um, my own personal journey um, was just really trying to figure out what was going on with my health and deciding that um, what, what I was getting as an option from Western medicine really wasn't going to cut it for me. I just didn't really feel like those were valid responses to what was going on right and so I had that experience with that blow your hair back information from functional medicine and I always feel like we really find where we should be in in the world and what we should be learning and teaching when something really just is super impactful when we start to put it together mm -hmm. so I appreciate and, and really love what you are doing and how you're helping everyone and your own personal journey because I think that's such a big part of it mm -hmm. so I think one of the questions people are going to want to know is what are the doshas where are they located how do you identify them so um, I'm I'm not going to be a little braggy, but I am to be a little braggy. So now, because I've been studying this, I can, I can look at somebody and know what their dosha is. And it's pretty cool. In the beginning, I was really sort of overthinking it. So Ayurveda believes in the five element theory. And that means that the five elements exist in all of nature, but it also, they also exist within us. Okay. Um, and with that being said, we're going to have some that are a little bit more dominant than others. We do have people that are what we call tri-doshic, which have like 33.3 .3 
um, percent of each. Wow. Um, I'm married to a tri dosha, which is an interesting um, dynamic. Um, but I am Pitta Vata. So what that means is, um, so we have the five elements. We have um, earth, we have water, we have fire, we have air, we have ether or space. So Pitta, because I'm Pitta Vata, Pitta is fire and water. If we were, or if I was, or other Pittas were fire and air, we would absolutely combust. Pittas <laughs> are um, very intense type A, it's the number one reason why I practice yoga, and I yoga is a part of my life. Um, very driven, um, we achieve goals, but a lot of times we have too many things on the burner, and um, they, or pittas like myself, are very, very prone to injuries because moderation, this word moderation, does not exist for us. <laughs> so um, it, it's funny, you know, you're laughing because I think you probably resonate with that because you yeah. have some pits in you for sure. Yeah. The, um, you know, when I'm going for another certification, so, you know, I, I'm ordained and people are like, okay, what else are you doing, Desiree? It's just part of my nature. Mm -hmm. But if I go too fast, I'm going to burn out. And usually for a pitta, it involves us getting very, very ill to the point of bedridden or injured um for us to stop think of like a, a racehorse right? I knew, i'm just thinking of the people that i know in my life that are that are that way right um, and that's just that's really interesting yeah yeah so we tend to burn out we tend to heat up um very very quickly so in order to balance that we need the opposite so pittas usually are going to be at hot yoga classes um they're going to be in kickboxing class. I just got out of spin class. So I allow <laughs> myself to have a bit of pitta in my week to kind of burn it off. But the yoga helps to balance it out. And specific yoga, like grounding yoga, therapeutic yoga, or yin yoga. So that's pitta. I also like to use the Winnie the Pooh characters because I think most people understand the Winnie the Pooh characters because they're yeah. so familiar to us. So a pitta out of balance looks like rabbit in Winnie the Pooh after Tigger just ruined his garden. So he's just like annoyed. Um, I always say that Pitta's first go-to emotion when we're out of balance is that we get really annoyed very easily. So everything pisses us off, everything. Um, and people are not good enough. They're not strong enough. They're not smart enough. And we just sort of like, get out of the way. I'm going to do it. Uh -huh. And then we, turn to, we tend to um, rather burn the trail and then kind of like take bodies with us if we're not slowing down. So that's sure. Pitta. Um, then we have Vata. Vatas are um, more like Piglet. Um, they're not confrontational. So Piglet um, is kind of like a nervous wreck, right? So yeah. he's always like, oh, poo, this is going to happen. Or he's like, <laughs> he's worried about things. And um, Vatas are made up of air and space. So we have very highly creative beings. I'm also Vata. Um, they're usually into the spiritual realms. They're really amazing artists, um, but they can sort of float away like a, a helium balloon mm -hmm. if they're not grounded. Vatas will forget to eat, especially if they're involved in their, in their work. Usually it's their art or their writing. And then they tend to be very forgetful. <laughs> Their first go-to emotion, again, is um, yeah. like the piglet tendency, which is fight or instead of the pits is fight, but the vata is going to be like, I have to get out of here. So um, they, there's a lot of escapism. They're really good escape artists, vatas. So um, when, hey, the puppy there, when um, a vata is feeling sort of challenged, they have this really amazing way of like, okay, I'm going to check out of this situation. So um, they love, again, like I would say like Kundalini yoga, um, yoga that's going to open up the upper chakras, so your third eye and your crown. Yeah. Um, they, they like sort of this, they're the mystics of the, of the yoga world, but they need to do the opposite to balance. Otherwise they can kind of just get lost and float away. Mm -hmm. So they need to eat and they need to eat grounded, rooted vegetables that come from the earth. So they need to bring in more earth and water. So um, those are some of Vata's tendencies. Then we have Kapha's. So Kapha's are earth and water, super grounded. Um, I have 
very little kapha in me. So even the way the rhythm of my speech is very fast and sort of direct, sharp. A kapha, I'm married to a kapha. <laughs> Try dosha kapha. Um, the responses sometimes if I'm in pitta mode are not fast enough for me. So a kapha, you will ask a question, they're processing it slow. So slow moving, um, very big. So um, the way that they look to, they usually have really big eyes and thick hair. Um, they're rounder in stature. Um, they like routines. They're really good at routines. But a kapha has to be very careful because they can really get stuck in their routine. Mm -hmm. And as we know, the only constant is change. So for kaphas, they got to switch it up a little bit. And they usually have an aversion to extreme heat, but they could actually rev up their engines a little bit and, and, and sweat, which most kaphas I know hate to sweat. They hate the summer. <laughs> they hate the heat. But they could use that for their metabolism. They're more prone to putting on weight. And um, again, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but they would never forget to eat. They have to eat. They get, those are the, that's the constitution that gets hangry if you right. don't feed them. <laughs> yeah. So they're, they're winning the true character when they're out of balance is Eeyore. So they have to watch out for depression, but severe depression and sort of like we have to drag them out of the rabbit hole. Um, once they kind of get really, they get very muddy because it's earth and water. So pitta, vata, kapha. And um, those make up the five elements in Ayurveda. That's Everybody really cool. I mean, that's really great. interesting because I could just see, uh, just as you were saying that, um, some of those different qualities in myself, but then just people that just, I feel like, you know, like that just completely pegs them. Yeah. Um, so that's really, that's super interesting. And, and yeah. I mean, I would probably help society in general if yeah, we absolutely. all were recognizing these different things because um, we would treat each person differently, more mm -hmm. suited towards how they actually like to process information. Absolutely. Yep. And in more of a holistic way because... Yeah we're gonna have our bad days. And when I see a student out of balance or imbalanced, I'm like, oh, they're just, they're having an imbalance. And so they need a little bit more of this so that I even know how to approach them when they walk in the door. And I also know how to approach their practice with the verbal cueing. It's yeah. pretty amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. I'm gonna pause this just real quick. All right, so we, you were talking um, earlier about how you have incorporated Ayurveda into, um, I'm sorry, CBD into Ayurveda. So tell me a little bit about how that practice works and um, the benefits of using CBD. So not many people are familiar with this, um, but cannabis is cited in the Bible, but it's also cited in the Atarva Veda which is part of this is an ancient text, which is part of Ayurveda. So cannabis is actually known as in Ayurveda as the penicillin. Um, it creates homeostasis. And that's what CBD does, right? So CBD um, works with the endocannabinoid system and it binds to the receptors CB1, CB2, CB1 in the brain, CB2 in the organs, mainly like the spleen and dealing with immunity. And there's some crossover with that. However, um, they use this plant to create what we call a sophic state in Ayurveda. And sophic just means balance, homeostasis. Um, the really cool thing about CBD, cavanodiol specifically, is that it's a tridoshic oil. So what that means is it, it, it could address all imbalances in all three constitutions. Wow. So it's pretty amazing. So mm -hmm. Ayurvedic practitioners, they will prescribe um, various oils. So for like a pitta, like coconut oil is pretty tridoshic, but um, like a sesame oil in the winter time um, is better for a vata because it's grounding. I see. Um, but it could be too heavy for a kapha, but CBD covers all of it. So um, some vata imbalances are neurological. So that would be 
anything from ADHD to anxiety to epilepsy. That's considered a Vata imbalance. And an Ayurvedic practitioner, they don't really, they look at the whole picture and they don't specifically say like, oh, that person just has epilepsy. They treat the imbalance um, versus just the symptom. Right, um, that goes uh, into the functional medicine methodology. So yeah, I love that absolutely, synergy. absolutely. So pittas are also prone because of fire of inflammation. As we know, CBD is very supportive in reducing inflammation. And then kaphas, um, kaphas are more prone to diabetes. So it helps to regulate, you know, study, countless studies on what it does for the blood sugar. So what we do or what I do in my classes and what I train um, some of my other um, teachers to do is incorporate the five elements but we incorporate cabinetile in the practice to create that sense of homeostasis. We usually do an element practice, so depending on what the season is, depending on what the students need, maybe everybody's having a vata imbalance during the holidays, so we bring in a little <laughs> bit more earth. And um, we use a PM blend, which, we, um, you know, which I sell and also take, and the PM blend is great for just calming the nervous system. So, um, the class is really set up. It's interesting where students come in, um, we ask them what their specific needs are and um, they try the CBD right off the bat. We explain to them what it is. And then we do a presentation, which is short um, and sweet, but just basically explains the endocannabinoid system, which a lot of people are like, what's that? We didn't oh, learn totally. about this. Yeah. yeah. We didn't learn about this in college. We didn't learn about this in middle school or high school. school. <laughs> right. It's only in like 20% of the medical schools now. And um, how it works with balancing out their constitution. And then we, you know, you can also, you know, I also put the CBD, a specific like PM blend in a diffuser to create oh. like a really relaxing effect in the room. And then at the end, we have this really amazing solve that we put on um, achy spots um, that's infused with CBD and um, very, very effective. And what we're trying to help the students do is access their parasympathetic nervous system. So the rest and digest part of the nervous system, um, which is absolutely in line with, with Ayurveda. And cannabis is known as one of the five sacred plants. Um, and it increases prana because of the, um, the oil. And oil is very, I did a whole training on uh, Shiradhara, which is like this whole oil um, process, which opens up your third eye and creates a relaxing effect and addresses imbalances. Wow. So oil is heavily used within the Ayurvedic system. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Usually what happens is students, um, they leave the class completely, we call it yoga stoned. Yeah, um, been there. <laughs> completely, completely <laughs> blissed <to> out. <laughs> and really sort of like um, on a whole, it takes the whole practice to a whole nother level. So yeah. I foresee um, Ayurveda and CBD yoga being a part of uh, practices on a regular basis. Um, the... The other cool thing is that Ayurveda believes that within the cannabis leaf, there's a guardian angel that resides in there. So if you look very closely, it's pretty cool. Um, they consider cool. it, yeah, they consider it the source of happiness, the joy giver, the liberator. And we have um, Lord Shiva, who is very, very known. If you, if you fumble through the text mm -hmm. or you read through the text, um, was a big advocate of... Uh, cannabis or there's lots of um lots of studies and also pictures of lord shiva um promoting um marijuana and there's a festival in in india once a year where everyone is um embracing this whole idea of cannabis and that this sacred plant which has been around for thousands of years it's pretty amazing yeah, it's really interesting i you know had a conversation with um chelsea for one of these shows and we mm -hmm. really about some of the history of of hemp in and of itself and these you know these cousin plants right mm -hmm. cannabis and cannabidiol and how they both have a have a place they both have healing qualities um and then also just the plant was, is such a gift to us because we could you know i mean originally the model t was a hemp 
was it hemp built and it ran off of hemp oil and um you know it's it's just interesting the road we ended up taking and how long it's kind of taken us to try to turn around and go back so that we can start being more sustainable and really living more naturally and having things that last a long time i know for me growing up you know my my grandmother had you know different things that she'd had forever and um you know she had a, she, her car ran forever it was this really cool ambassador which i don't even know how many people know what this is but it's just it was this really cool car um but like her refrigerator and all these different things were built to last right and now everything's built to to last a couple of years and then we have right. such a throwaway society and I think we've finally come to a head where we need to start being more sustainable. And so I just, I'd love that you can use hemp for those reasons. And then it comes back to this amazing healing quality that comes from using it in these different practices and using it in Ayurveda yoga. I mean, I wish that I was on Long Island so I could come and take your class because it just sounds amazing. And there aren't very many um, really available, certainly not in my area. Right. Um, so when you um, do, you, so you diffuse it, do and people put it on, or they, do they take it? They ingest it. They ingest it, um, and then some people are still a little leery until they they hear about the benefits. And you know, again, hemp was one of the five sacred plants, um, and mm. they called it bong. Um, also, a lot of people don't know this, but ganja is actually comes from it's a Sanskrit word. And um, it's just been used as slang, but yeah. it's part of it. It's so, so funny, right? That yeah. um, there's this word, you know, the more I kind of delve in, I'm like, it's just completely mind blowing. So they ingest it. Um, and some people won't ingest, ingest it, but usually at the somewhere in the midpoint, as we're explaining, um, just the misinformation about mm -hmm. this plant and yeah how it was politically driven um to motivate that to criminalize this plant and then also racially driven and just the history of all that people mm -hmm. are like oh i didn't even know that but i'm like the declaration of independence was written on hemp right um right. the yeah, first exactly. american flag um so it's just about like educating and then once you explain that the endocannabinoid system is the largest self-regulating system in the body we know about our endocrine system, we know about our circulatory system, we know about your respiratory system, but why don't we know about this endogenous system, this largest endogenous right. system, and how important it is, and how we became deficient? And we, we also um, are very transparent, like, okay, so also think about the rise in diseases. So mm -hmm. I myself um, was diagnosed with an autoimmune last year, which totally blew my mind because I'm a yogini and um, I have a very, very clean diet. And even when, you know, I was like 95% vegan, when we eliminated that little bit of dairy, I was still having symptoms. And really my integrated medicine doctor was the one that said, I don't know, I think maybe you should take CBD. And I said, there it is again, the CBD. <laughs> and uh, she said, yeah. I think you need to take it and you'll do your research on what brand you should take. So um, it's sort of mind blowing, but this is the direction that we're going in. It's exciting time to see um, this whole holistic approach to, to medicine. It really is. Um, it's, it certainly is what lights my fire and um, being able to help people. I, you know, I, a lot of times we're still at a place where by the time you're coming to see a functional medicine practitioner, you've you've exhausted all your other routes and nothing else exactly. you know nothing else is working so then you're like well i'm just going to try this and see what if this person can help me and so the amount of work that i end up having to do just to unravel what you've done to yourself over 20 30 years 40 years um and then start kind of fixing those things making those lifestyle changes um and having tools like cbd um it really helps, especially because a lot of times you need to feel some sort of way of feeling better right away. And um, 
I know for me, I, you know, I kept having CBD come up and I was like, you know, I don't want to really spend the time to look into this. And then I <laughs> did. And then I was like, wow, this is, you know, like, this is amazing. And why is it, why is this sort of still, you know, back, back, away from everything and and so i really have been wanting to educate people on how you know it's an adaptogen it works differently in every person's body it helps fill up what's missing and it helps um pull out what shouldn't be there and so that is such a an amazing tool right so if i, if I would say you should take ashwagandha I should be able to say, you know, the CBD oil will help you in the same type of way. And it works in the same way in that it takes a little bit of time to build up in your system and start filling in those gaps right. or you start to really notice. But I've been using the full spectrum for two weeks and a friend of mine, um, she's like, oh, you can tell that, you know, like you're just a little bit more relaxed. I'm like, yeah, this has kind of helped to take some of that stress edge off for me yeah um and so it's it's pretty great and i've been using i added it to my face oil and so i've mm -hmm. been using it that way too and um i'm i it's a subtle to subtle difference so um it's pretty amazing i've really been impressed yeah absolutely and then with the skin you know because the skin's the largest organ um Pittas in particular have to be careful for inflammation and their skin tends to be a little bit more sensitive. So um, we have a whole skincare line that I utilize and um, it's phenomenal because I have very specific needs that I can't just take that product that has that because if it has something, it's going to cause more inflammation for me. So it's, a, it's another way. Yeah, you could put it on topically, you can ingest it. And I think that for um, somebody who is so driven like yourself, just that little bit of like, because you know, CBD is real. It has that ability to um, induce um, that parasympathetic nervous system mm -hmm. where when I am calmer, I'm actually more productive. Right. I don't have to be like this crazy lunatic that's running around um, trying to get everything done. I can actually get things done, more things done in a productive way without exhausting myself. Right. So it's been like really amazing. Yeah. When I drink coffee, for example, um, we have CBD coffee. CBD, uh, regular coffee does not relax me. Regular coffee actually starts to... Um, if I have too much caffeine, it makes me too jittery, mm -hmm. but CBD coffee does the opposite where I'm just like completely chill, which the first time I was like, what's happening? <laughs> I had to like sit back <laughs> on my couch. So I was like, oh, that's your parasympathetic nervous system. Get to know that a little bit more. And, um, you know, I think it's super important because we do have so many people in adrenal exhaustion because they're in fight or flight over um, somebody cutting them off on the road. So it's for every little fight. thing you see people trigger yeah. so quickly, and right. um, and it is really you know it's it kind of makes me think about how you go into the store and somebody's freaking out and you're like mm -hmm. okay that's an imbalance and and yeah to a large degree you kind of CBD kind of helps you take that step back. Mm -hmm. a little bit because you're not in that you're not in that mode with them you're more you're just more relaxed you're more in, kind of in tune with what's happening with you and you can perceive what's happening with other people instead of being involved with it so to right. speak um that's one of the things that i've found to be really impressive because i do you know i see people freak out all the time and i'm like mm. <laughs> You know, you like, modulate your energy where you're just like, you know, the worst thing to do for a pizza in particular is to somebody is upset. The worst thing just that as just a disclaimer for the entire planet, do never, ever, ever tell a pitta that's upset to relax. Right. It's like pouring oil onto a fire. They're like, don't tell me to relax. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's my son. Like, yeah. And if, and then if you're getting, you're raising your fire, usually what happens is, is an explosive combative situation. But if you learn to modulate your energy and sort of dial it back and get more grounded and see them and also hear them and recognize them, it's just, 
it's such a phenomenal way for even communicating with um, each other and um, really avoiding a lot of um, unnecessary arguments because you yeah. really understand what that person's going through. Or the same thing with a vata. If, they, if they're blowing you off, it's probably because they just forgot <laughs> because vatas <laughs> could just be really forgetful and all over the place. And so it's a beautiful way to really understand it. And I think the marriage between um, CBD and Ayurveda, which has always been there, but it, reintroducing it in modern day society is so essential right now because um, where people are in health crisis. So yeah, this is is uh, 80% of the reason why most people go to the doctor is, is a stress-related right. situation. And um, I was watching the Human Longevity Project and mm -hmm. Reed Davis is the founder of um, Functional Diagnostic Nutrition. And he was talking about, he's like, I'm in the industry and I can tell when I'm like too far over into this fight or flight. And so teaching everyone how to get, how to recognize and pull it back in and different tools that you can use to do that because you know we're we're shortening our lifespan we're we're extending our 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 road to dying is what we're extending instead of our road to living and that's because we're always stressed out we take different medications that um dry us out and um, have all these different side effects. And so you end up on this, you know, this arsenal of drugs. You don't feel any better. And then you start to get that despair, right? Mm -hmm. So that's sort of how our health care has been mm -hmm. going. And it's really sad and it doesn't have to be that way. Right. And so um, using a lot of tools to me is the answer, right? So starting to figure, you know, like making lifestyle changes, making dietary changes, incorporating a practice like Ayurvedic yoga. Um, if you are that person that needs to burn the energy, like doing a little bit of both, right? Just like you said, like you had a spin class and then you have your more grounding yoga practices, like do it, like giving yourself those gifts. You're so much more present and available to give back to the people you care about a career that you're interested in mm -hmm. um, just pursuing the things that you want to have in life. You're, you're able to show up and do that. And then I think that that's part of when people start finding that, I think we're going to have a different path in society. This will be a Absolutely. lot of joy. Absolutely. And I, you know, again, like Ayurveda means like the wisdom of life and wisdom in nature. And that exists within us it's a mirror so empowering people to remember that they already have this wisdom we already come built with this wisdom i mean there's sacred geometry within the folds of our ears within the fist of our hands it's a beautiful beautiful thing and um, when we remember that when we pause and we remember that and remember that there is wisdom within nature there's medicine within nature um, something very interesting and beautiful happens. And then that's super empowering. And that's, that's what's really cool for me with this work when people that light bulb goes off and they're like, oh, I remember, I remember who I am. I'm this infinite being full of so much wisdom. So yeah, it's absolutely phenomenal. And I, I really love that this is a direction that we're going in. And I love when people start to say like, oh, you know what, you're right. You're absolutely right. Oh, I understand what that imbalance is, or I know what it feels like when I'm balanced. So Pitt is balance, great leaders, very productive. Um, they have like this vibrancy to them. They shine, they blaze in a very positive way. Vatas, these are the beautiful artists of the world. When they're really balanced, they create art, they follow through amazing writers and the spiritual leaders of the world. Kaphas, we all need kaphas in our life because they help to ground us. They're also very slow and steady. And if they incorporate these little tricks to help keep them balanced, they actually have a lot of longevity. It's like the tortoise and the hare, it's like slow and steady. So we can all learn from each other and, and incorporate a little bit of um, 
a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and there's a recipe to it. So anybody who's a, an amazing cook or a baker, you know, if you put too much sugar, it's gonna, it's gonna mm -hmm. ruin it, right? If you right. put too much salt, it's gonna ruin it. It's just about finding balance, which is homeostasis, which is all about CBD, which is sattvic, which is what we talk about in the system. So it's a beautiful thing and I'm excited and you know, I'm happy to say that I found my homeostasis again and um, I was the one that was like, something's wrong. And traditional medicine, you know, they didn't take the, the proper, um, they didn't do the proper tests rather and really were like, you're fine. And I was like, nah, something's wrong. I, I know my body. And right. it really took somebody kind of digging in there and really yep. investigating from a spiritual level, from an emotional level, um, absolutely, from a physical level. I mean, she. this is the first time I sat on a couch with my doctor and she talked to me and examined me for over an hour, which mm -hmm. mind blowing. And um, this is what this is all about. It's about a holistic approach to things. Yeah. yeah, that's amazing. I love, and I love hearing that um, more and more practitioners are coming out that, that incorporate this and, and you should always be spending an hour with your, um, with your primary doctor for them mm -hmm. to get to know you because if they're just looking at an intake form and, you know, asking two or three questions, you're just not going to get down to what's really going on with someone. And that was my experience as well. It was just like, well, I was just getting older. And I was like, no, that's not what's happening. Here. And <laughs> right. And it's just like, well, your labs look fine. And now that I know how to read labs from a functional perspective, I'm like, my labs did not look fine. Mm -hmm. Right. They really didn't look fine, but you know, it's, it's, not a, a lack of desire to help, it's a lack of having the tools to help because Western medicine has largely been hijacked by um, pharmaceutical companies and they really spend the time to teach you like um, symptoms solution instead of looking at the whole body. Um, and it's, it's, it um, hurts my heart a bit when I have clients that try to go to their practitioner and they're told like, who's putting these crazy ideas in your head that you need, you know, these labs or you need this information. Um, but then, you know, then they have someone like me who's like, well, here's another route to get the same information so that we can get to the bottom of what's going on with you. Absolutely. Yeah. And then to holistically address the core issue, not the symptom, because right. that's like trying to put emotional. something on a branch and then keep putting things on a branch. The branch is going to eventually break. Right. You need to go to like the trunk. Go to the core yeah. issue. Yeah, you need to go. I mean, that's what we see. You're looking for the root and you may not find what the, the, the first seed, but you're going to find like what, what that area is that needs to be addressed. And there's a way to unravel it. But the other thing is, is that a lot of times we are holding on to emotional uh, baggage. Mm -hmm. And that's what's causing like unaddressed grief, um, feelings of invisibility or feelings of um, inadequacy and internalizing that. It will come out as an illness. Absolutely. So, yeah. You know, as much as we like to think that we can just ignore those things or consider that we've dealt with them, um, you really do have to deal with them from a variety of different angles in order to bring yourself to homeostasis. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think that's what your practice really does is it helps people get in tune with their bodies. Mm -hmm. Yep. And really the, it offers them, you know, everybody has free will, but it offers them the opportunity to really look at what's going on. So they really get to dig in very deep um, and look at their shadows. And this is a lot of what we do within this practice that nothing is ever on the surface, nothing. Nothing is black and white. Life is not black and white. There's a whole big picture that we have to look at. So we always look at things from an emotional or spiritual perspective. and. You know, not a coincidence that, you know, I got an autoimmune and my sister was diagnosed with breast cancer right after um, we lost our parents within a two-year period. Not a coincidence, right? right. No, you're and, right. 
And so, you know, when I was like, okay, we have this grief, um, I have to deal with this grief and my sister had to deal with her grief and treat it holistically and kind of go through the process of that and then do things to support us during a very stressful time. And I mean, that integrative medicine doctor is the person that's like, oh, wow, Desiree, one of these things would just blow a fuse. One of these things, but you've gone through like all of this stuff over the past couple of years. And um, yeah, we need to look at the whole picture. And that's where we really need to like tune in. And if you think about like nature, if there is too much of this, too much of that, a storm starts to brew, then a hurricane, then an <laughs> earthquake. You have these catastrophic situations because of disruption in the um, sort of atmosphere and what's happening um, in the elements. So we are exactly the same way. So it is an, it's, it's a mirror. So we need to pay attention to that. And I love what you said before. Um, you know, I have a refrigerator. We just bought it a year and a half ago. It's broken. So we just call it the cooler right now. And we're trying to find, you know, the <laughs> warranty. And I'm like, that was not a cheap appliance. Right. But they don't make things the way they used to. Um, we live in a very wasteful society. And, um, you know, you're feeling sort of that eruption, if you will, in the planet is like mm -hmm. kind of like what's going on. So I think it's really important for us to kind of wake up, not only to the wisdom of nature, but then also respect mother nature and, and that wisdom and um, start to take steps to, to change that. And, you know, hemp is this sustainable product. We can make roads out of hemp, clothing. Right. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, I was talking about Target, like I'm trying to like kick my Target habit because that's disposable clothing that winds up in our landfills. So um, it's, it's a whole um, approach, like the science and wisdom of life, but it's not just what we ingest, but also how we're living our lives. Absolutely. So you mentioned that you have a mudra you'd like to share with us. And so yeah, absolutely. we can close so, with that, I think. Yeah. So the name of this mudra is called Haikini Mudra. And this is just a really easy way for you to check in with yourself to see where you're um, imbalanced prop or possibly. So whatever dosha is dominant at that time. So what you do is you're just going to rub your hands together to create heat. So I'm Pitta Vata. So my fingertips are usually very cold all the time. So if you have Vata in your constitution, you may have to rub a little bit longer to create oh, heat. Hot. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take your fingertips and touch all 10 finger pads together and then bring it right in front of your heart. And then close your eyes, take a nice deep breath in, and a long, slow breath out. And I really want you to tune into the rhythm, the pulse. So notice the pulse between your fingertips. See if you can get a sense of which pulse is more dominant. Okay, and then when you're ready, you can open your eyes. So what did you feel, Christina? And I'll explain exactly where the elements are in the finger. Most, but is it the so, middle two, but mostly this one? The thumb? Um, uh, ring finger. Ring finger, okay. So we have um, earth is your pinky, water is your ring finger, fire, of course, is your middle finger, <laughs> space <laughs> is your pointer, um, air, I'm sorry, air is your pointer, and then space is your thumb that hangs out here. So it seems that um, your water is pretty dominant right now, the water energy right there. So... Um, how are you feeling? Um, I've been feeling anxious. So it, it may be that your body is asking you for more grounded energy, asking you to pull in a little bit more earth and water, maybe to hydrate even more um, and to, just to slow it down a bit. It's interesting because I, I actually... Um, this week was like, I really need to drink more water. Ah, <laughs> I've been, upping, been yeah. upping what I've been drinking, but also 
you know, it's like, um, as I'm doing these job transitions, that's one of the things that I'm like, okay, I, I have that hurry up and do this yeah, and having to like make myself like it's happening as it should be happening. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's your body's <laughs> like, way of communicating with you to slow it down, to hydrate. It's pretty interesting. Um, so before we close, I just, because this is, I, I felt like this is one of the most interesting things. Um, so when we met the, our Ayurvedic teacher, what she does is she looks at you very inquisitively and you're like fascinated and like, ter like terrified at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, what do you see? What do you see? Right. <laughs> she, can, she can read your aura and also your shadow to show you where your imbalances are. And she actually, um, her kids, one of her, her kid, one of her kids is a cardiologist, one's an oncologist. Wow. When they run out of answers, mom comes and does the rounds at Mount Sinai Hospital. Oh, so wow. Come, yeah. So when they're like, mom, I don't know what to do. Mom comes around. So um, she also checks your pulse and uh, she can check the pulse if somebody's pregnant and check the baby's um, rhythm and tell the baby tell the, the mother if the baby's going to be pitta kapha or kapha pitta. Wow. She knows the constitution. But when she explained our rhythm, because we're all vibration, right? And so yeah. when, a, when a pitta is like, we're like vibrating like very, like a, a street lamp, just humming like too fast. A bata is kind of like, ye, 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 that rhythm like that. Yeah. And a pitta is, uh, not a pitta, a kapha is more like, slow and steady so when she was explaining when she's reading our pulses a pizza's pulse is very strong and steady like a drum beat a vata's is like a snake so it's like and then it stops and it's like oh i'm here oh my gosh yeah yeah so it's erratic and that's very very prominent um and for a vata that's having an imbalance, or just vatas in general. And then the kaphas are boom, boom, boom. So we all have this special rhythm within us, which is so cool and fascinating. Yeah. And when we understand that, then we're like, okay, this is what I have to do. So I know that, you know, I, I did my spin class, but I know that I have to hydrate a lot today and then do more grounding practices. So I'm gonna spend some time outside and kind of breathe and do my work like that, nice and slow and steady. So I hope that information was, was helpful, but this is, um, I can go on and on and on about this yeah, work. No, it's really beautiful. Yeah. I, yeah, it's, it's uh, thank you so much for sharing. I'd love to let people know how they can get in touch with you and especially for any of our listeners that are in Long Island, how they can go and practice with you. Absolutely. So um, my website is www.desiree, D-E-S-I-R-E-E, -E -E, joy, J-O-Y, sparrow, like the bird, dot com. That's my real name. Um, okay. <laughs> it's not a made up name, Desiree Joy Sparrow. Um, and you can look me up there. I also do Akashic Records readings and uh, ministry work, a lot of yoga and CBD education. Yeah. Beautiful. Thanks, Desiree. I appreciate you joining. You're welcome. Thank you.